Yesterday I was working with radios um, and I started um, to inspect the pack, uh, pickup dump in Wireshark and I started to wonder what it uh, looks like. So uh, here in, in this window this is a device which is going to log in and well it, it's already here I don't have to go into it. The, it communicates with this radio server on port 1812 and the password for communicating with radio server is Tinkerbell and that's one of the first passwords in the Rockview <laughs> word list so it would be quick to crack this one uh, using only the pickup file, recorded pickup file and um, pretend we don't know the shared secret and we don't know the password so this is the shared, shared secret between the radius client and radius server and then there is a password for each user so I actually don't remember the password so I'm going to I think it's this one right here so the login is Albert and the password is this one that I just generated it okay now I'm logged in but I did, forgot to start to record. Uh, the interface that is in the same subnet is this one, ETH 1.10. Uh, it's a VLAN interface on the ETH 1 interface. So I'm going to record to radios.pcup on the interface is 1.10. I'm logged in and that should be recorded. So I've only got two packets. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that was enough. I'm going to copy that over here. Uh, and I'm going to po copy it over to my Linux computer. This is my uh, Mac that I'm using to record the screencast. Okay, now I'm on here. I got this file. Maybe I can inspect it over here, by the way. So it's here, Radio Wireshark. Can look at it first here. So it, uh, it's only two packets in here one access request and one uh, accept packet sent back. So the uh, switch sent a uh, access request packet to the radio server dot ninety nine, and the radio server sent back an accept. So if we expand uh, the access request, we see uh, here is a random string that's called the authenticator, and a number of value pairs. Username is Albert, and uh, you see length is eight, but Albert is only six character because the first two are type and length and then from byte number three uh, is the password and then the next one is the encrypted encrypted password so the question is how is this encrypted well if we go to uh, John the Ripper we can see of course it has support for this and I copied the a Perl script radius to John the Perl and And this, in the comment in the beginning, has a link to a web page that describes a little bit more what how it works. Uh, blah 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 blah. I want to read this. Yeah, it's actually enough to just read this line. Uh, if the password is shorter than sixteen characters. It will only do this once. If it's uh, more than 16 characters, it will do repeat this over and over again. But instead of the this RA is the authenticator string, the random string I showed, and C1 here is the first encrypted string. 
but if the password is shorter than 16 characters, it's only one line, and it will open up for some attacks. For instance, if you know the shared secrets, and the authenticator is in the packet, then you can calculate MD5 of the shared secret, concatenated with the authenticator string, and XOR the uh, value that is in the uh, XOR this value. Where is it? Here. XOR this value, the encrypted password, will give back. Where was I? Here, this value is the password XOR MD5 of the shared secret plus this authenticator thing, which is this value over here. But both the authentication string and the user password encrypted string are in the packet, so the only thing that's unknown is the shadow secret. So if we know the shadow secret, uh, we can calculate MD5 of this, take that uh, result of this, XOR, uh, this value, and out should come the password, because that is what happens if you just uh, move, move this equation around a little bit, move uh, P1 to the left. P1 is C1 XOR and this. Alright, uh, that's the theory. So let's see if it works in practice. First, let's see if we can crack the shared secret from only the pickup file. John the Ripper has a script which I copied, this one, and I didn't do anything to this script. I'm just going to run it. I didn't enter the shared secret, I didn't enter any passwords, I'm just going to run it. And it gives one output put line on the John format here. I'm going to just paste this into a new file. There. And I'm going to run John. Uh, give it a word list. The standard word. This is rock you, and th this um, this will try to crack the shared secret. I'm gonna be give it a custom pot file. That is where the results are saved. And uh, John, there, and it cracked the shared secret. Shared secret is Tinkerbell. Now. Uh, excitingly enough, what I just explained, I also implemented in Python. So I give the shared password and name of the pickup file. This XORs two byte strings. Uh, so what it does, uh, it checks the radius code. And if we go back to Wireshark, you can see that the radius code one, that is access request here code 1. Uh, Alright, and the authenticator, that's this string here. And the key stream, well that was the shared secret plus the authenticator. And calculate the MD5 digest of this and we get the key stream. And then, um, well username can also be extracted from here, the first uh, T, uh, the AVP, what's that, value pair. That's the username, and the second value pair is the user password. So the second value pair here uh, is the, I call it pass hash here. So XOR between the pass hash and the key stream uh, should give back the password. So let's run it. And the password was Tinkerbell, the shared secret. And it gave a username and here it's uh, is the password plus two zeros. Well, it's um, if we go back to the web page, the sh uh, password here, the output from MD5 is 16 bytes. So the password uh, is zero padded. Uh, length of the password plus zeros until this the length becomes 16. So here we can see that the length is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14 characters plus two zeros, that's 16. And the output of uh, MD5 is also 16. So uh, here is the password uh, decoded. Uh, and this is actually the same password. We can prove that it's the same password by trying to log in again. So, uh, I paste. There, it works. And that was all that I wanted to show. That the radio's communication, if you can uh, sniff the traffic, is pretty much insecure, especially if the shared secret between the client and the radio's server uh, is easy to crack, for instance, if it's uh, in uh, uh, readily available in the word list.